Welcome back to another episode of RecTalk. I'm your host, Nitin Sharma, the founder and CEO of RecTools.io. RecTools is the world's largest whole of market directory of recruitment suppliers. So if you're a, a product or service that supplies into the recruitment industry, head over to RecTools.io and get yourself a free listing. We can talk about subscriptions and partnering and um, sort of the added value that I can bring to you um, at a later date, but everybody's entitled to a free listing. So click the link in the bio and head over and get yourself on there. Um, today's an interesting episode, really, because we're going to sort of talk about um, automation and AI, the differences between the two and kind of pulling them away. But in the um, sort of the pre-conversation, uh, there was a term used, which I think is it sums it up perfectly in terms of this is kind of more a case of, you know, outsource 2.0, the, the next evolution of the outsource model that w- was. Um, so my guest today, I'm really pleased to invite onto the podcast, is Dries DeCosta, Managing Director of Chat Automation, yep. uh, and also host of Recruiters in Cars Getting Coffees. That's it. Um, which, again, if you, I would highly recommend subscribing if you're a petrol head and you like recruitment. The, the link will be in the description for you guys to, um, to subscribe. Dries, I appreciate you making the time, mate. Thank really you very good. much. Thanks for having me. And, uh, yeah, mate, yeah, 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 yeah. Getting yeah. something a little bit stronger than the old coffee. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> dad coffees. These are. That's what I call. That's what I tell my kids. Yeah. Yeah, dad coffees. A Belgian, a yeah. Brit, and a uh, <laughs> Irish beverage. <laughs> uh, so yeah, look, you 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 said in the in the pre-chat, um, you know, kind of obviously we're talking about your product and chat automation and yeah. stuff, but actually in general, this concept of pulling away automation and AI from each other and extracting kind of what that actually is. Yeah. Um, and I don't know whether that's part of sort of an intentional thing, but outsource 2.0, I think, sums it up perfectly because, yeah, you know, what you guys do and what your product does and what AI is, is really supposed to do is exactly that, right? Yeah, I think, you know, for, for us, it's, it's interesting. So we do chat and automation, right? And, and I think it's important to differentiate between the conversational AI piece on the chat side, which we would say is a revenue generative tool for recruiters to use. Yeah. Um, and then the automation side, which can be re- revenue generative too, but in the main is actually, like you say, it's outsourcing 2.0, uh, employing uh, digital worker bots uh, almost as an extension of your workforce. Um, you know, it, it's really looking at taking out cost of the business, but by and large. So it's important to make the distinction between AI and automation. Mm-hmm. Um, in terms of what we do, actually, we in, in a lot of cases, we actually do bring the two together as well. Yeah, no, that's fair. Let's start with AI then, because you said something there about the conversational piece, which I think everybody's going to be sitting there. I say everybody. Most people are going to be sitting there being like, oh, fuck off. I've seen what AI does. Yeah. And everything's about elevating and boosting and rocket emojis. Yeah. And, you know, leveraging and all these fucking words that nobody used pre-open AI and chat GPT. And now yeah. all of a sudden it's in every post, right? Yeah. Um, Open that up for me, because conversational AI is just seems like the buzzword. I mean, LinkedIn have a conversational AI tool. Yeah. When I connect with you, and I'm like, hey, it's very, it's been very a while since we connected. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? it's it's shit. It's not that's not there's, there's, there's it's shit. Everyone will agree it's shit. But yeah, so is is that what you're talking about when you go we, we, we use conversational AI? So our conversational AI is really there, particularly in in the high volume, um, high complexity type environments. Okay. Um, so typically that will be your temp recruitment agencies, right? Yes. So it's really to help recruiters see the wood from the trees, uh, qualify candidates, as I say, en masse, and really taking care of that top of funnel um, side of things and, and freeing up the recruiters, the sellers to sell, spending their time talking to well-qualified candidates or even um, uh, even potential clients, right? So, yeah, okay. So, so that's that's really where, where we use that, uh, as I say, as a re- revenue generative tool. I think what's interesting... The, the maturity curve, I mean, everyone's heard and seen chatbots and I think a lot of recruitment agencies have tried it mm-hmm. uh, and in a lot of cases it's failed because what was available has been pretty basic. I, I think yeah. we're, we're edging towards that next wave of the next iteration of these chatbots, which you know we, we're well positioned to be part of, but to a degree, the market for that is still somewhat being created. Mm. But if you look at it from a candidate perspective and if you broaden that out to a consumer perspective, you know, I, I love, <laughs> I mean, they make a shit ton of money uh, out of me, I'm sure. But like, for example, just interacting with Amazon mm-hmm. um, on their app, if I have a return or something goes wrong, 
I go onto their chats and they sort it out there and then it's really hassle free, right? And I think that instant gratification, I know it's not a candidate driven market at the moment, but if you think about it from a candidate perspective, that instant gratification is really what people are after. Add that to, if you look at people having to, or used to have to use apps, mm -hmm. people are fed up with apps as well. So I think when people want to get to information, it's all moving in the direction of chat. Uh, and as I say, that's, that's definitely going to hit the recruitment sector over the next you know, 18 months or so. If you, if you look at the SIA reports, um, that's yeah. reflected in there. I, th I think this is the thing though, isn't it? In, in recruitment, everything eventually comes into our industry, uh, but we're always seem to be the slowest to react, right? Um, but there are always early adopters. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so you're talking about kind of maximizing the amount of outreach that you have with candidates. Yeah. Now, I know you said that there's not a candidate um, kind of, it's, it's not a candidate centric market at the minute, but I think candidate stickiness is, is probably more important now than it's ever been, given mm. the fact that actually the way people buy and the way people make buying decisions is through things like recommendations and yeah. referrals yeah. above yeah. just happening to stumble upon right. something. Yeah. You want, in, in, if you're on that high, high volume temp world, yeah. you know, you can compete on rates and fees, mm. which is a race to the bottom, mm. or you can compete on service. Mm. And that doesn't happen in those high volume worlds as much. So actually, it's a real market there to be able to go, actually, if we give our candidates a really slick experience, yeah. they're more likely to tell their friends and their kind of cohort yeah. circle, who yeah. are probably doing similar things to them, yeah. about that experience. And I think the, the experience makes them stickier, gives them more, to your point as well, more loyalty to the recruitment brand ultimately, yes. right? So what's interesting there is, on average, I think candidates will apply to about 12 different jobs. Yeah. Now, one thing's for damn sure is they don't want to speak to 12 different recruiters, right? Yeah. In fact, I think that, that Bullhorn did a report a, a couple of years ago with the SIA, which really looked at, um, did, did many um, candidates actually choose any jobs because of the recruitment experience they had? And the answer is no. So you, you got to ask yourself the question as well, particularly in the, in the blue collar type world, is how much does a candidate actually want to speak to a recruiter? Mm -hmm. uh, to be controversial, the, the stats would suggest not so much, right? They want to actually talk to the end hiring manager. Um, but but so I, I think giving that that sticky experience to your point mm. is really important to hook them into the brand uh, and then in turn generate recommendations so that, you know, these people will talk to their mates down the pub yeah. uh, and kind of go, hey, you know, I'm working for these guys, had a great onboarding experience. You, you should definitely uh, give it a try as well. And what we try and do there is not just use things like conversation AI, we will use generative AI to do highly personalized video messages, for example, okay. which is actually using uh, avatars that look like humans, um, but we'll talk to the candidate with their name, uh, with if, if they're coming in for an interview or whatever, with the time that they uh, are booked in to have the interview and so on. Interesting, okay. How, how slick is that though? Because we've all seen that and I'll probably clip it into this YouTube video, but yeah. the video of, um, you know, the generative AI of Will Smith eating fucking spaghetti. I've and not seen that one actually. <laughs> have you not? No, you have to send me the it's link. It's fucking dreadful. <laughs> yeah, it's dreadful. Why but, anyone would want to see yeah, Will Smith well, eating spaghetti. Well, it was one of the first examples of generative AI, right? Okay. And, and then the point is though, that it, like, everybody was like, this is this is awful. Or Yeah, um, that's yeah. maybe why I haven't seen it because it's not great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but you've got the other bit as well, though, of like, um, like the, the, I mean, I, I spend a lot of my time on, on TikTok, right? But like things like, then you've got the, the, the vines that are being then taken on and it's all a bit odd and it's not quite right. Well, that, that's, that's the, um, I mean, that doesn't look like Will Smith. That doesn't look like Will Smith at all. Maybe it was. Yeah, there there it is. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, I mean, his face is massively <laughs> deformed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the first example of generative AI. Now, gotcha. obviously, there's there's better stuff out there. Listen, we know that, that now. It's, but... it's evolving, right? But I think that the point of it is, I think probably your viewers and your listeners are just fed up with yet another AI type conversation. And we were talking about this earlier, where I think there's a bit of fatigue around AI. Yeah, of course there is. Yeah, yeah. People have been talking about AI, how it's going to change the recruiter's life. And then in a lot of cases, it kind of goes quiet when people want to go, okay, but show me how. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, that kind of generative AI piece, the rate at which that is evolving and getting better is frightening. Yes. Um, yeah. So, and this is kind of partly what I meant earlier in terms of the maturity curve. It's not necessarily quite there yet, but there are some really good examples. And I'd like to think in terms of what we use. Mm you'd be hard pushed to actually realize that it's it's gen ai and it's not a real person
Okay. Do you think that's do you think that's important then? If you are a business that's um, adopted conversational and generative generative AI, yeah. Do you think it's important to hide the fact that it is AI from the consumer or the end consumer? No, I think people know uh, ultimately. Um, I think it just speaks to quality of experience, really. Um, you know, we, we, we do do things, and it's a bit of a philosophical debate with some of our, our, our clients, is even on the chatbot side, is how quickly do you get the bot to respond to the question that the candidate has asked, right? Um, and as I say, it's a philosophical debate. We, we naturally would like to make it feel like a human interaction. So we actually will deliberately delay some of the responses. But then equally, we have, um, you know, we have people that actually want to, their approach is, well, it's, it is a bot. So just be open and honest about that. that but yeah, this is the thing, yeah. But that's where my mind goes, right? It's sort of, it feels a bit dishonest and a bit misleading if you're kind of like, I'm going to adopt, you know, automation and AI and combine the two for a better slicker experience for my team. Yeah. But I'm then going to hide that behind a, a facade of here's a real looking person yeah. who's going to talk to you and confirm the interview yeah. as an example, right? Yeah. Because then if I'm, a, if I'm a candidate, I'm going to come and be like, oh yeah, I spoke to this Debbie. Yeah. Like, you know, I tried to find her on LinkedIn and she doesn't yeah. exist. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, or like, I'd like to speak to her again because she seemed to understand what I was asking. Yeah. You know, because there's always going to be a quality difference between a human and For what sure. the AI is able to do, right? Yeah. And the amount of information they can access at any given point. Yeah. So you're not you're not lining yourself up for a bit of a. Do you know what I mean? Like, I know. What you mean. Is it not better just to be like, hey, like Jarvis? Everyone knows Jarvis was fucking AI, right? Yeah, you're going back a bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but like, that's, that's in my head. That's kind of how it should be. It's sort of I, like listen, Siri. Everyone knows that Siri isn't a real person. I think, no one's sitting there trying to date Siri or trying to like you know find Siri on LinkedIn. Yeah. I, I think so just to set the kind of record straight on that and thanks for, for the challenge <laughs> but I think you know you, you'd be offending people's intellect if you thought they actually <laughs> thought it was a real person so I think so then why do it I, it's just it's just a nice experience um, that's what it comes down to ultimately if you're talking about consumers and, and let's face it candidates to recruitment agencies are essentially consumers um, then you just want to give a nice memorable experience I don't think anyone is thinking you know, our, in our demo environment, for example, our um, the the person on our chat but is called Emma. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think anyone for a minute thinks that that's a real person, um, but it's just a nice, pleasant experience. Mm, okay, interesting. Um, I, I just mean, I, feel, I feel like if you're going to go down the route of generative um, AI, yeah, like I had this conversation. Uh, I think it was with Gabby. Yes. Yeah, it was with Gabby. When I was like, look, if I'm, if I'm a rocking. virgin, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, if I'm a virgin customer, virgin banking customer, for example, yeah, like I want Richard Branson to answer the phone, be like, hey, it's Richard Branson, like, yeah, you know, um, like what can we do for you today? Yeah, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. I'd prefer that, right? I, I would prefer to like if I'm having to see somebody that's a fictitious made up thing. Yeah, I want Samuel Jackson. Yeah, like, well, yeah, I want Denzel Washington. Do you know what's really funny? Like, I don't want Emma, who's like a made-up person who's not actually real. Do you know what's like, really funny about that? Push the fucking envelope, right? Right, so when we, when we were kind of talking about our demo environment and stuff like that, we actually were thinking about, do you, you know, do you have a chatbot that is Samuel L. Jackson or... or Jackson? Jackson. Jackson. Or Will Smith. Sean I'll show you. Yeah, I was just going to say, <laughs> you're on your shit. Anyway, we digress. But, um, or even like a... ...personality love him or hate him, he's a character. Yeah. So, so we can absolutely have fun with it and the tonality we can do, right? So for the recruitment agencies out there that just want to have a bit of fun with this, we absolutely can. I think when you're looking at a chatbot, eventually, like with any chatbot experience, you get to the option of talking to someone. That option's always there, the live chat talking to someone. Mm. So by, by default, you therefore know this isn't a real person. You, you yeah, no, I, I get it. No, I, I, I'm, I'm playing devil's advocate, right? Because yeah. I totally agree in the when you when chatbots first became a thing, um, you know, on, on like the you know, drift or whatever on websites, mm. they named them. You yeah. Know? When you speak to an outsourced call center in India, you're not speaking to Mahindra, you're speaking to Mark. Yes. Right? Yeah. It's it's kind of trying to not humanize the process, but kind of familiarize the process for people. Right. I just feel as though there's there is an argument to be that's a bit dishonest, especially when the tech exists for if I have a if I had the ability to do that with yeah. rectals, yeah. I wouldn't go, oh let me get an Emma. Yeah. 
I'd be like, look, let, it should be me. Yeah. It's my business, well, my brand, it should be me, or my stuff. Right? Yeah, so just to be really, really clear on that point, we can absolutely have a character or something like that, or, Fine, the, or, the, or an owner avatar. Um, it's it's all down to yeah. client preference. That That's the first thing I'd say. The second thing I'd say is um, there's obviously regulation coming in more and more around AI, where we're quite lucky as one of our advisors actually sits on the cross-parliamentary committee for AI. So Very we're ahead of the curve. We <laughs> want to keep it ethical. Yeah. Um, so we're ahead of the curve, both from a technology perspective, but also from an, an ethical uh, standpoint, because you're right, you know, you're into, or you can easily get into, we definitely don't, and we don't want to stray near it, is this kind of impersonation of, yes. uh, you, you hear horror stories now of people getting called up, mm -hmm. um, sounds like a certain person that they know or trust, um, and then, you know, they get defrauded. So, yeah, clearly, we, yeah. we want to stay well clear. No, a really close friend of mine works in, in the, the fintech sector, yeah. um, and he's working on exactly that as a project of, like, how do we decipher voice yeah, um, that is AI generative. Well, it's because, scary, right? Because it's so accurate. With a lot of the, you were talking about banking earlier. If I call up my bank, mm -hmm. I've got voice as part of yeah. maybe one of the stepping stones to get through the security. So mm -hmm. if someone, which you and I can easily be copied because we both have our own podcast. Right? Well, exactly. This is it. So he did. That's what he did. He was like, "Oh, let me demo this thing for you." And he literally just ran through, I think it was like only two episodes yeah. that he pushed into to this bit of software right. and was able Office. to, yeah, yeah, yeah. And was able to clone my voice to yeah. the point where he was like, if I rang your wife and said these things, yeah. would she buy it? And I was like, 100%. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm sitting here thinking, where have you got me saying yeah. this from? Like, if yeah. you rang my wife, she'd go, why are you calling? Like, yeah. never call me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. But by the way, oh, yeah. my, I wouldn't answer. My <laughs> voice, my voice on the bank is now turned off before anyone gets any ideas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but these are things you got to consider, isn't they? they, are, they there's there's like, a big ethical yeah. part of of this whole debate, and um, you know, it's right; it should be regulated. I think um, when you listen to a lot of the leaders in this space, they talk a lot around it has to be globally regulated. Yeah, because if you have a you know, a country that doesn't play ball to try and get an unfair advantage in this space, mm -hmm. then globally, this may cause trouble. Right? But, but you know, like the saying goes, the cat is out of the bag. The technology is out there. It's, it's already there, isn't it? So yeah. far, so you, you either adopt it in the right kind of way or well, you get left behind. Let's talk about the ethical argument then, because you talk about your digital worker bots, which I, yeah. I love that as a phrase. Yeah. Because um, it explains exactly, it's, it's the Ron Sill description. I love that. But is that not putting people out of a job then? Is that not actively going out to, to, to kind of, you know, from an unethical perspective? Yeah, I mean, we, we should probably start by describing exactly what it is. Yes, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, we yeah. go into that if that's okay. So, so essentially, our digital worker bots are there to automate the kind of more mundane tasks that, as a rule of thumb, it's basically what a graduate can do in front of a PC with some logic applied. Those kind of processes in and out of your tech stack. So if you've got your existing recruitment tech stack, there will be gaps in what your tech stack can and can't do, yeah. which typically people will supplement by putting people on, on yeah. the process, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So it goes in and out of different systems, doing yeah, things like- Yeah, pull it from here, do yeah, this, do Onboarding, that, yeah. credentialing, whatever. So, so first and foremost, I should say, we they are the kind of processes that we can help automate. So typically these are tasks that, let's face it, people don't actually really want to do. Mm -hmm. um, and yes, there's some logic applied to the process, mm -hmm. which we configure into the digital worker bot, but I'm not replacing management accountants, right? And I, I, th I think you and I talked about this earlier when we were talking about outsourcing 2.0. I think there's more of a threat of outsourcing higher skilled jobs to low cost countries, probably than there is to, um, you know, to what we're doing with the digital worker bots. But, but in terms of the ethical side of it, it's no different to having a workflow in your CRM system, right? Yeah. That automates some process. So this is not a new concept, it's just being done differently. And where we can plug that gap is, as I said, it's often process in and out of a tech stack where maybe technology doesn't talk to each other because it doesn't have an API or whatever, where we stand up a digital worker bot that logs in through the front end of the applications. Right interacts yeah. like a human with these applications and just you know it, it's roughly it's a quarter of an FTE is what it costs so they work 24 7 they don't call in sick they don't give you any HR aggro um, but they're highly reliable high data integrity and at a fraction of the cost 
Yeah, first, yeah. I can't play devil's advocate with that. I, I, I get it. Do, yeah. but, you know, it's... Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, I completely get it. Because, yeah, it's, it's the same it. principle, to, as I say, to just automate it through technology in another way. Yeah. It's just that we, we basically plug those gaps that your tech stack... Well, actually... The, the thing the, is, as a business owner, we all accept and know that actually some of these more administrative jobs are time-consuming and we rely heavily on... Look, I ran a recruitment agency and we had a an apprentice and a really, really good apprentice at that but she was 18 years old, out of school, right. you know, first job. And she was in charge of doing all the manual stuff to do with our payroll yeah. for our workers. Yeah. And when that went wrong, yeah. that was a pretty shit thing for her to have to deal yeah. with. Yeah. And then a very unfair thing for her to deal yeah. with. But it only ever went wrong because of manual error. Yeah. It was never a case that the information that was being provided was wrong. It was right. a manual error. Yeah. Which, you know, had a negative impact on kind of the brand and the business kind of... Yeah, because you've got if you if your own workers are like fuck now this this agency don't pay me on time. Yeah, how many times do do temp agencies hear that? Yeah, uh, it's never the it's never the client's fault. Yeah, you yeah, know the the company they work in. Yeah, and it's never very rarely is it the payroll provider's fault. It's the agency. That agency haven't paid me. That agency yeah. did this wrong and that wrong. So you know these these manual heavy or labor intensive roles. If you can, as you say, set up a worker bot to just essentially do what that job does. Yeah. It frees that personal to actually be involved in to more, do more meaningful things. Yeah, right? meaningful stuff. Good. Absolutely. And, yeah. and you know, we, we were just before that we were talking about the hard cost savings, but you just touched on some of the softer savings. Yeah. Essentially, because you know, employee satisfaction on taking away some of the shitty jobs or parts of their job, perhaps yeah. that um, you know that that they might have to do. So it could be you know, there's an example of an engagement we've got going on at the moment where um, all of the recruiters have to place a phone call. And they do about 15 to 30 minutes talking to a candidate just to capture information, right? Right. So yeah. this isn't necessarily replacing a job. It's just freeing up the recruiters to, to, to do, do more, more of that what and less of the other stuff. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So so there you're talking about employee satisfaction and actually giving more enjoyment back into, into mm-hmm. the job. So, mm-hmm. yeah, you can spin it a number of different ways. Yeah, no, fair. So, so what is the um, what what is the sort of pushback that you guys get then? Because... That there is a very, very um, negative view within the recruitment sector on AI. Yeah. You know? um, and I'm not talking about the ones that you know go to these talks and actually want to listen to what's going on out yeah, there. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 I speak to business owners who, you mention the word AI or, or the concept of it and immediately it's like, nah, I'm not interested. Yeah, yeah. Don't even talk to me about that. I'm not interested. Yeah. And part of that's ignorance because they don't actually get what it is. And the yeah. part of that is sort of, an ethical piece of but no, absolutely not. We're not going to go down that route. So, tell me about some of the the, the sort of the objections that you guys get. Um, well, we we haven't really massively come ac- across any objections. I think the the kind of guidance that's coming in from Europe um, again around governance and legislation mm. is um, what you cannot seemingly use AI for is to actually make decisions on who's a good candidate, who's a bad candidate, right? Um, so again, we have to differentiate between AI and automation. I think from an automation perspective, you can absolutely automate decision tree type process, no different to a human making the decision, we're just doing it much more quickly, much more efficiently. Mm-hmm. Whereas, um, you know, if AI is used in that kind of way, then then clearly that can have a negative impact, um, you know, if you look at DE&I and, 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 and things like that. So um, I think, again, it's, you have to demarcate the two different areas, yeah. AI versus automation, and, and actually a lot of what we are doing is is more on the automation side with AI, actually. So it was underpinning some of it, yeah. Correct, yeah. Fair, fine, okay. So give us some examples of like, you know, different, because it can't just be sort of, like payroll we've talked about as an example, yeah. but give us some, some, yeah, tell us about some use cases where you've had where you're kind of like, actually, that's a really good one. And, and there'll be recruitment yeah. business owners listening that will be going, all oh, right, okay, how, what does this mean for me and my business? Yeah, so I, I think what's interesting if you look at recruitment, like you say, on the whole, late adopters to, to a lot of technologies, right, which is interesting given workforce is just such a big topic and such a big part yeah. of the economy, you'd think it'd be the other way around. But nonetheless, recruitment agencies tend to run lean. So this technology, in terms of our automation side, I'm talking now, our digital worker bot, it's not new. It's called Robotic Process Automation, RPA. Yeah. It's been around for quite some time. You have big players like UiPath, Automation Anywhere, uh, Blue Prism, just to name a few. 
The challenge is, if you wanted access to that kind of technology, you, you'd be spending 100 grand plus, right, to, to procure one of these digital worker bots. So the ROI just hasn't been there. So either recruitment agencies have not heard of it, mm. or if they have heard of it, it's been inaffordable. And this is where we're creating the market, um, really in that kind of, particularly in the mid-market space, right, where we're coming in saying it's roughly a quarter of an FTE and we can take on these kind of mundane processes. So I think it's it talks more in terms of uh, about inaccessibility mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, than, than, you know, pure play. Uh, I've, yeah, I've lost my train of thought. Here. No, 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 fair. So, okay. So, so if I'm a recruitment business owner, can I use it in marketing? Can yeah, I use so you're it asking... for my finance function? Can I use it for my legal function, HR? Yeah. You're, you're asking about a specific process, thank you. So so yes, mm -hmm. absolutely you can. And, and what's, what's great about our technology, the way we build a digital worker bot is we basically screen record someone doing the process. Mm -hmm. If there's APIs we can use, so that they're kind of linking into uh, into different tech stack elements, then great, yeah, we'll yeah, do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. If not, what we need is a login to to the various systems so so that's it's almost as simple as that it can sit on top of the existing tech stack now because it's so highly configurable we have we have a library now of lots of different examples whether it's marketing automation mm. uh, lots of examples there that, that i've given at some recent talks um, practical examples in the recruitment space onboarding and compliance is just a massive area yeah that tends to be quite labor intensive so a good example of where we fuse um conversation i with the digital worker bots is, for example, in, in um, education recruitment. Okay. So you have a candidate hits the chat bot, we qualify them, but then someone needs to trigger the DBS check and make sure, hey, you know, is, is the check still in date, etc. So we can have a digital worker bot that does that kind of work or contract generation or whatever it looks like, right? Mm, okay. So that's your kind of middle office kind of processes all the way through to back office. So, um, you know, when you look at things like time cheating in the temp world, uh, it's not uncommon for recruitment companies to have different clients that supply time sheet information in, in different, different formats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And our bots have the ability to to read that, whether it's a PDF, it's an Excel sheet, it's on a different system like a VMS or whatever, extract that information and go and create uh, the payroll export file. Okay. In exactly the same way the person who's doing it now asks. Correct. And, and an another commonly used example, sorry, is uh, management information. Mm -hmm. So the bot has the ability to go into different systems, whether it's your your BI, your CRM, going into LinkedIn Recruiter, your call system, pulls that data together, actually compiles the report and then can even send it out to your distribution list. So you've got your KPI month on month type reporting. Amazing. Okay. That makes sense. Fine. So where where do you see then? Because you're 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 on the pulse with this sort of stuff. Where's the evolution of all of this? Where where is this leading to? And that's more of a philosophical question. Ooh. I appreciate that, but you know, where is it leading to? I think if if we flip back to AI, um, again, it's it's just another evolution, right? So we were talking about this hockey stick earlier, mm -hmm. where people have to adapt in terms of the work environment. So the question you asked earlier, which it's it's a bit of a cliche answer, but it's true, is AI going to replace recruiters? Well, no, um, but recruiters using AI will replace. Recruits, yeah. Right? So yeah, 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 yeah. You've got to get on board. It's with... the same as businesses. Businesses using AI will survive. Businesses yeah. who refuse to use AI are going to be. It's the same as think back to the nineties when you had businesses that went and got a website, and then those who just didn't because now nah, I don't need a website. It's ridiculous, and now they're the ones that you don't trust. Right. You've got yeah. to. You you've got to keep evolving. Right. The yeah. Kodak example people have used till they're blue in the face, but it's a it's a really good example of if you just stick to what you know, you're going to get left behind, and yeah. and actually both AI and automation ultimately gives you the ability to either increase your re your revenues or to actually control your cost or bring those down through efficiency. Mm -hmm. And if you don't do that, you can be damn sure your competition will. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I think, I think you know, to answer your question, where's it headed? It's just another industrial type revolution, uh, albeit led by AI and, and bots uh, now. As and opposed the, to yeah, as yeah. opposed to you know machinery, yeah, physical human, machinery. Yeah, yeah, okay. But I think well, the, the pace of change—that's the interesting thing, right? That's just accelerating like bilio, um, and I think that's where the modern workforce need to stay abreast um, and stay relevant. But let's go back to then the conversational AI piece then, yeah, because the quality of that is very poor, 
and has almost remained pretty static in terms of um, sort of the output in, in mainstream AI. Mm -hmm. Is that likely to change? Is there going to be more kind of, um, well, can, what do they call it? There's, there's a term for it within the sort of natural language models, isn't it? Yeah, there's what? natural language models, large language models. Um, that... So is, is, is there, is, is there a, a likelihood that the conversational AI is going to be a lot more human-like in its in its kind of base form, or is it always going to be about elevating and you know what I mean? Like, you, you, yeah, I, th I think I'm going to give you a slightly different answer to a different question, probably if that's okay. <laughs> <Go on. laughs> um, but I, I think I think you're the guest, man. <laughs> <laughs> I think the opportunity with with the conversational piece is it's more the the broad reach of the data that it can access where it will broaden out. So mm, on okay. the one hand, when we talk about large language models, it is responding to data it has been fed and learned on, right? And we've all seen the horrendous examples in the news of, um, you know, they'll remain nameless, but some companies where the bots have started to hallucinate. So because people are feeding it racist information or... Yeah, or it's going to Reddit for its thing and like, right. you should eat three rocks a day. Right, yeah. <laughs> you know, stuff like that. So so I think there's an element there in terms of controls around it, which we yeah. do in our product, um, just to keep that on the straight and narrow, if yeah. you like. Yeah. But actually the ability to broaden the knowledge base into trusted sources, i.e. maybe not Reddit and, and just someone yeah. in a share that has written something, is not necessarily a trusted source. But the ability to to surface data that lives elsewhere. I'll give a good example uh, with some of our clients who are in international healthcare, for example, international mm. nursing in the States. So taking nurses from abroad into the US. Some of the questions that these nurses will have will have something to do with immigration. Yeah. Immigration rules are constantly evolving, right? Yeah. So it's unrealistic to expect us or that recruitment agency, staffing agency, as they call them in the States, yeah. to keep the knowledge base up to date. Yeah. However, yeah. What we can do is pull in information from USCIS, which is the US Immigration yeah. uh, Service yeah. and the website. Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So use then, these three places as your right. So then, then you're the triangulating yeah. information from the recruiter to answer a sense. candidate question, as well as from trusted sources. Mm -hmm. So you bring it together to you know give a factually correct answer back to um, to the candidate without them having to call up the recruiter and you know asking these kind of questions and therefore taking up time. So we're, we're back to the efficiency. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, okay, no, fair enough. And actually, I think, yeah, there's... Look, my, my take on it is the, the quality of the it, of the um, output is really irrelevant in terms of, yes, okay, it might use rocket emojis and use stupid like, terms that are very obviously AI. The only people that seem to kind of bother are copywriters and people in marketing. The, the reality of it is that... The use case of what you're talking about is no different to when uh, businesses move to the telephony model of press one for this, press two for this, right? It was sort of like, this serves a purpose. The purpose of this is to go, right, we need to IVR and we need to move calls into different departments rather than being a switchboard and having a switchboard. And that was the purpose of it. So no one ever sat there and be like, do you know what? When is when when I ring Barclays? When's it going to get to a point where it actually sounds like a normal person? They didn't care. Yeah, you know, it used to be I rang this business and they went through to the operator, put me through to this department, yeah. and they had to switch me through. And now it's just press one for this, press two for this, press three for this, and that was the purpose of what it is. Yeah, and so it's almost like actually, does it really matter that it, the well, AI sounds like AI or touches and looks and feels like AI? I think what's interesting on that point is you, you're talking about a way of a consumer getting to information, right, and yeah. basically triaging to the right place to get the information which when you look at chat and conversation AI, the really interesting piece there, it really has an ability to become your most knowledgeable recruiter. Yeah. Because you're harvesting information that lives within the recruitment agency, as we already touched on, external trusted yeah. sources. But then also you have the ability to actually surface information that you want to surface, somewhat gated, to your candidate. Now, what do I mean by that? If, if you've got a 10 candidate, and let's say you don't have a great timesheet system or whatever, and they can't easily see things like, when am I next being yeah. paid and how much? The ability for them to ask the chatbot that, the chatbot to verify they are who they say they are, maybe there's a four pin message that goes to their phone because mm -hmm. obviously we, we hold the candidate on the CRM, we know their phone number so we can validate they, they say who they say they are, they yeah. are who they say they are. But then for the ability, to have the ability, sorry, for one of our digital worker bots to go into say your payroll system, 
and find that information that the candidate wants back. yeah and just present it back without the need for the candidate to have to call up the recruiter the recruiter to speak to payroll payroll to give them the answer after I don't yeah. know, half yeah, a day yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and yeah. then they recruiter to come back off lunch you got it yeah so so that again is speaking to efficiency gains no i like it yeah yeah that makes sense that makes sense I think that's a pretty good place to leave it. Unless there's anything you want to add. No, thanks for having me. No. So how do people get in touch with you guys? How do you get your demos? You know, here's your chance to pitch. Camera's there. Yeah, I think you know, <laughs> we, we've touched what we do. But um, if you want to get in touch with me, my name's a nightmare to spell, so probably don't do that. But if you go to <laughs> www.chat-automation.com, you will find us there. And uh, yeah, look forward to speaking with you. Thanks again. Mate, this has been cool. Pleasure. Appreciate that. Thank thanks, Nathan. Love talking AI. Cheers. All right, I'll turn that off now. <laughs> that was good. Was that 45 already? Yeah, it was. It was, yeah. Just, uh, hang on.